Let's talk about the Wildcats and the return of Eric Paschal. Eric Paschal, one of the keys to this team, and we mentioned in the previous segment the fact that with four fouls, he's still playing with aggressiveness defensively, causing back tap opportunities, serving as that guy to protect the over the top lob when a smaller guy in Colin Gillespie, after a liberal switch, as Villanova always likes to do, uh, is having to front that big man. Paschal providing that over the top presence you need. But offensively, Eric Paschal, even though you think he's 250 pounds, a big guy, doesn't really have that true back-to-the-basket game and is an excellent ball handler. So where he excels is out on the wing. And the Wildcats, as always, will be in blue. Eric Paschal starts out over here. Jalen Brunson up here. And maybe you have Mikel Bridges down here, Omari Spellman over here, and let's just say Dante DiVincenzo here. Here's what's so great about Eric Paschal and what he provides this team. He loves to dribble to the middle of the floor. So if he starts over here by Dante, let's say Dante is now uh, Eric Paschal, he likes to drive to the middle of the floor. Rather than going baseline here, where you can collapse a second defender, make things difficult on the Wildcats, and really make things difficult on Eric Paschal, he's much better driving to the middle of the lane. And here's what that does. You get a defender right here, usually a guy that maybe is a bigger guy and can't really handle the quickness of Eric Paschal. So this defender is trailing trying to get here. Paschal can either beat you to the basket all the way to the hole, which he does extremely well, he can rise up from right here and shoot over top of somebody, especially if a defender is late or if a smaller defender happens to be covering him on that particular play. Or what he can do is draw a second defender from here. So maybe Dante DiVincenzo's defender has to come in and guard or Jalen Brunson, his defender, tries to crash. All of a sudden you have all these opportunities for one of these other extremely talented offensive players to find a way open. Dante DiVincenzo is going to be my big example right here. Dante DiVincenzo, more than anybody on the Villanova basketball team, is an excellent back cutter. So Dante DiVincenzo can either step back and hit a three, or he can cut to the hoop and finish really strong off the glass or even dunk the basketball. We've seen him do that many, many times. So let's run this the other way around. Dante DiVincenzo... And Eric Pascal. Pascal's going to now switch sides of the floor. Pascal is over here. DiVincenzo. Actually, we'll put him on the baseline. Why don't we? DiVincenzo will be here on the baseline. Pascal drives to the middle, guarded by this defender right here, who follows him in. DiVincenzo's defender is here. Pascal beats that defender, even just a little bit of a hedge, by this defender coming this way. DiVincenzo can either flash to right where Pascal was at that right wing and fire away, which he did multiple times, or just zoom right there, back cut baseline, and catch the ball either on a lob or on a back cut, bounce pass to the baseline. Pascal, again, he's a guy that will have four and five assists on a good day because of his ability to get into the middle of that defense and be so excellent in terms of committing a second defender or simply beating his defender off the dribble. Now, the, th the next concept, though, is talking about the fact that Villanova, while they are very successful dribbling that ball into the middle of the defense, there are still guys, and some of them are younger guys, who still elect to go baseline. And it's very limited in his opportunities, but Jermaine Samuels still does that in the rare opportunities he has the ball because Samuels is usually going to be over here when he catches it. And he has one of two things he can do, really three. He could outlay it to somebody, send it down low, something like that. He can get rid of the ball, or he could dribble towards the middle like Pasco does. But more often than not, he's dribbling down here, committing a second defender, especially against his own, and then all of a sudden Villanova's in trouble. The other guy that does that a lot is actually Colin Gillespie, the backup freshman point guard who may see a little bit less time now that uh, Phil Booth is coming back, and we expect to see him on Wednesday. But it's worth bringing up because Gillespie, and, and truly more so I'll actually say that Gillespie's on this side because like many great point guards, especially some that have come through Villanova, Kyle Lowry, etc., he is a righty, shoots the ball, certainly can dribble with the right hand, 
but is more comfortable going to his left. So Gillespie likes to come this way to the baseline and a lot of times will jump at the baseline to throw a pass to Mikael Bridges. A couple times, including against Xavier, that has been intercepted. But what he did well against Xavier, and I'll call it bailing himself out, is he got to this point, two defenders came down, a big here and the guard that was guarding him. But as Eric Paschal, I think it was Eric Paschal, popped out here for what could have been a decent look, that defender followed. Gillespie double fa- double double shook the guy right. He hesitated, and then he came underneath the basket and finished. So it, it's not necessarily something that Villanova should be doing. And as we see here, dribbling the ball to the middle of the floor, albeit not rocket science, has represented most of the opportunities for Villanova, especially when it's a big like Eric Paschal. He's very, very successful of getting into the lane. And then if you don't pick him up, I think of a big dunk against Seton Hall, and there are several like this, he will just throw it down on you. But if you commit a second defender, he's a good enough dribbler, he's a good enough passer to find guys in open positions. And I mentioned DiVincenzo, the best back cutter on this Villanova team. It's a 1-2 tandem that we haven't seen Uh, as much as maybe we'd like this year, as Dante really was not in that starting role. Perhaps he will be as Phil Booth starts to come back and those two see the floor a lot more together. So that's our V's and O's segment here tonight, and we'll be back on the other side. We are going to welcome Tom Trainer, who will be calling in in the last 20 minutes of the show to talk a little bit more about Xavier, that Big East race, Phil Booth coming back, and, of course, some big matchups coming up next week. And our pick'em game where we're coming down to the wire here at the end of conference play. See you on the other side.